Don't forget this Thanksgiving season, self-love is the greatest form of love. Blah, ever. blah, blah. Too much talk about self-love, not enough talk about self-basting turkeys. This, this is a hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest internet debates. I'm your host, Josh Ayer. And I'm your host, Nicole. I love stuffing Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta do uh, that again. <laughs> no, when your parents came here from Iran, they, they were like, what's the most American <laughs> middle name we can give her? And it was Nicole. I love stuffing Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hendy Zade. No, we have to do it again. Um, we have to do it again. Okay, fine. Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show we break down the world's biggest internet debates. I'm your host, Josh Air. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiety. Oh, you, I thought you were going to give yourself a long fictional middle name <laughs> like you did in the failed take that we just had. Okay. And I'm your host, Nicole. Why not cranberry sauce? And I. <laughs> <laughs> Why not cranberry sauce? And that is effectively, Nicole, the topic that we're talking about today. We wanted to take a break from mm-hmm. all of our vitriolic debates about whether or not a corn dog is a cannoli. That's right. Uh, to actually give people some salient cooking advice. That's right. We have compiled 10 of our greatest Thanksgiving tips. We sat there. On our, on our pooters, mm-hmm. short for computers. Yeah, I'm familiar with pooters. And pooters. just, just uh-huh. wrote out everything What else could felt? a pooter be confused for, Nicole? <laughs> I don't know. Let's you know, think. you eat a big Thanksgiving meal, you sit down in the toilet, and what's coming out that pooter? Oh, pooter's Anyways. butt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but no, we got Thanksgiving coming yeah, up. Yeah, we do. You know, we got a big NFC West matchup with the 49ers playing the Seahawks. Yeah, Jerry Rice was on the 49ers. Jerry, well, I'm glad that you know that. And his son... Brendan Rice is on the OC Trojans. Uh, okay. But th- speaking of football, uh, yes. Thanksgiving is the Super Bowl for food. That's right. People got to cook a lot. That's true. We have a lot of cooking expertise. I would say we have a large amount of it. And I think we have an ethical obligation to mm-hmm. lend that cooking expertise to people to make their lives better. That's right. What do you think the, the biggest pitfalls during cooking Thanksgiving dinner are? I think people just get really caught up in the... In the yeah. The whirlwind that is Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They want to impress everybody. They want to make their homes nice and open and welcome to everybody. And they have maybe like 45 things going on at one time when honestly the human brain I've heard on TikTok can only <laughs> <laughs> can only concentrate on four things at one time. And like, how can you do that when you got potatoes that are, you know, that are boiling away, a turkey that's cooking, you gotta baste every 15 minutes, and then mm-hmm. you gotta open up the can of of uh, cranberry sauce, so you gotta make sure your things are seasoned properly. It's really hard to manage. Yeah. They hold on too tight. People yeah. hold on too tight. You gotta Bruce Lee, be like water. You know what I mean? You gotta be fluid. You gotta move mm. with the groove. What I'm yeah. saying is, if this is up your alley, drink a little bit, baby. That's my first tip, number one. Your number, number one, start one tip. Start cracking the cocktails, 10.30 a.m. You can make one of them breakfast cocktails. My most successful Thanksgiving dinner ever. I was drinking French 75s. That's a mixture of gin, lemon juice, simple syrup, and champagne. I was drinking French 75s at 10.30 in the morning. By the time Thanksgiving uh, dinner rolled around, we didn't care what the food was. So your first Thanksgiving tip is to be drunk. Yeah, that didn't make our official list. Of no, it did. Did it really? It's it's <laughs> well, according to this, nine. it's number nine. That. But you're but but you are going off the path a little bit. You're saying so. We wrote here, get people drunk. Oh yeah, that was number nine. Or yeah. not drunk. You can be drunk on conversation as well. The point is the meal. <laughs> is, listen, there's a lot of people that don't drink. There's children that listen. There's people who just don't yeah. drink for any amount of yeah. lifestyle reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, you can be. Uh, it's about vibes. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so you're saying set the tone by being easygoing. Lower your actual expectations. And this goes for anything in life. I think one of the plagues of modern society is that we all have such high expectations that you want Hmm. to change the world, that Hmm. you want to be famous or rich or whatever. No, people used to be happy if they knew how to lay bricks. Well, I don't think they're happy per se for laying bricks, but you know what I mean. Do you think happiness is a new thing, is like a new modern thing? being happy the way that we consider happiness and comfort is yeah it's very very new for modern society yeah, right yeah, yeah 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 and so what i'm saying is lower your expectations to what like an 1830s sorghum farmer would have had you know if you have a baby born without tuberculosis like wow That's oh my god you deal. did that uh, you did That's so you know if you deal. have food on the table you should be grateful is what i'm saying thanksgiving is more about vibes be like water don't hold on too tight 
so is the baby with tuberculosis getting it like in the hospital or was born with tuberculosis? Yeah, I don't know how people got tuberculosis back then, but they were always getting <laughs> always tuberculosis. Oh my God. It. Yeah, it was wild. If you look at death rates like a hundred years ago, uh-huh. it was just like it, tuberculosis is like 16%. It was crazy. Shut up. Tuberculosis, massive. And so you should be grateful you don't have tuberculosis and that you're drinking French 75s on the morning okay. of your Thanksgiving dinner. That's tip number one. So number one, Josh says vibes. And if your vibe is drinking, do it. Do, do it. it. Okay. Yeah. What's That's an actual more practical cooking tip okay, for people? Actu- okay. I'm going <laughs> to, since we're not uh, married to this list in terms of order, mm. let me see what's next. Uh, here's a good one. If uh, Ain't no shame in the canned food game. Canned Interesting. sweet potato and mm. canned cranberry sauce are your saving grace sometimes. Yeah, that's another part you of holding on too things? tight. People being like, I got to cook literally everything from scratch. Oh, yeah. I got to make my orange pointless. zest star anise cranberry marmalade. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, a personal anecdote of yours? I did that one year and I was like, hmm, <laughs> worse than ocean spray, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like it's one of those things like if it's broke, don't fix it. Like yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like if it's if it's already a perfect product, like you can jazz it up a little bit. Like no one's going to hate you if you make if you take cranberry sauce that's in a can Mm -hmm. and you jazz it up a little bit, that's cool. Yeah, pop a little sherry vinegar in there, you know, make it taste a little bit new. Yeah, utilize modern canning and modern food technology to make your life a little bit easier. Speaking of terrible times in history, the Napoleonic Wars, Nicole. Oh, please, Josh. One madman coming off about the optimism of the French Revolution despite the brutality of the Jacobin regimes. Napoleonic Wars were actually a big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, deal. Napoleonic Wars were a big deal. <laughs> the Napoleonic Wars really shifted the paradigm in uh-huh. food production and consumption. That's right. Because he was like, we got to feed all these uh, troops going on their murderous rampages around Europe. And so uh-huh. canned foods. And by Napoleon, the Napoleonic Wars were in vain unless you eat canned cranberry sauce this Thanksgiving. Oh, also, isn't like, I've never been a green bean casserole kind of girl, but isn't it all canned stuff other than the French's onions? Absolutely. Green bean casserole traditionally is three canned, even the French's fried onions, they basically come in a can, right? Sure. Um, That's three ingredients. It's cream of mushroom soup, condensed, do not uncondense it. That's where the flavor is. Canned (laughs) green beans. And this type of stuff I have made from scratch before, Mm -hmm. but I kind of made it from scratch to try and taste like the canned stuff because it's good. But I was like, surely with fresh vegetables, it's going to taste better. No, it it tastes about the same. Green beans, (laughs) it's just salty and boiled. Lean into the canned stuff. Know where... Know where you want to put your efforts. You can't put your mm-hmm. efforts. Nicole, if you got like nine friends in your group, I, okay. they can't all if, be your best friends. Of course not. You know? No. Sometimes you got to just not respond <laughs> to six of their texts. Oh. And then you take the three, you know, that you're really close with mm-hmm. and, you know, you focus on those relationships. It's the same with Thanksgiving. And are the three friendships the, like, dishes? Yeah. Oh, like okay. Okay, so my recommendation, like turkey, right? Number one. That's okay, yeah. D- like, it's the star. It's the star, yeah. and a bad turkey is terrible, yeah. and sure, it can be saved with the gravy, but number two might be gravy. Mm-hmm. The turkey and the gravy, that's important. Okay. You know, and then three, stuffing. I, I, I choose stuffing as my third. So those are the three that you would... Yeah, the rest of it, it's all window dressing, not window stuffing because it was left outside the bird. Don't put windows in your turkey. Hmm, I think the three most important things to have on a table are turkey... Gravy and mac and cheese. Oh, oh. We're a mac and cheese family. Oh, well, that gets us to another rule here, Nicole, because we wrote one about the mac and cheese, and we're going out of order because I <laughs> forgot that I legitimately put get people drunk as our official guidance. That's borderline <laughs> inappropriate and irresponsible. <laughs> uh, we had something about traditions being malleable. There we go. Traditions are malleable. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We got, in my family, Nicole, we grew up on green bean casserole, some sort of sweet potato, some Mm -hmm. sort of mashed potato, Uh stuffing, turkey, and then cranberry sauce. Nice. Mac and cheese deserves, nay, you deserve to have mac and cheese on your Thanksgiving table. Why don't people do that? I don't know. Nobody does that? It was, I believe, uh, in my internet chronological history, Uh um, I believe there was a single white who had tweeted, mac and cheese does not belong on the Thanksgiving table. (gasps) And then many, many black people came out and said, hey, this is mac and cheese has been on our Thanksgiving table for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Open yourself up to it. (laughs) Mac and cheese is the best food. It's great to feed a crowd. You can pre-make it the day before, pop it in the oven. And it is 
abjectly delicious. Yeah. But you can make your own traditions. Yeah. I mean, like, come on. Like, I'm not white. I'm not black. I'm a Persian Jew that whose family came here in 1990. All of our dishes have a twang of Persian in it. For example, we don't do stuffing. We stuff the bird with rice, oh. also known as two deli, which translates into into the stomach. So we do like a rendition on stuffing, but it's a little bit Persian. Our cranberry sauce, David's aunt makes this ridiculous cranberry sauce with, um, what is it? It's cranberries, it's saffron, it's barberries, Damn. and oh. it's this sour, oh, sweet, delicious cranberry sauce that we put on top of everything. And even sometimes some people put a saffron in their mac and cheese. So traditions are malleable and you can do whatever you want. It's, it's up to you to create that dish. I'm getting inspired right now. I'm trying to game plan my own Thanksgiving now. Okay. And when we're talking about malleable traditions, I want to eat everything with a tortilla and salsa. Like, that's just how I that's enjoy how eat. eating my food. They, yeah. You've seen me eat. Yes. Every, I turn times. everything into tortilla with some sort of salsa or roti sabji, as sure. you'd call it in Hindi, right? Sure. I just want a flatbread mm-hmm. and I want saucy meats and I want something acidic on it that's well spiced. Okay, smart. Why am I not doing that? On Thanksgiving. The one day of food. The, the one day that you should yeah. be celebrating food. Yeah. And now I kind of yeah. really want to do this. I want to I want to make mole. I want to have, you know, flour tortillas. I want to take a whole bird and cook it in pig's lard like carnitas. Wow. You know? good. Hit a little bit of orange on there, a little bit of cola. Um, I, but the point is you don't have to be beholden to all the things. Sure, sure. you might have family members that are like, mm-hmm. hey, this has to be on the table and respect that. But another tip we did write down, Nicole. Mm-hmm is don't experiment on Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah, I have a book. So does this run counter to that? Does this run well, counter to that? Well, well, listen, there's a TikTok of a, of a fine lady who's responsible for the, you know, beautiful spread and everything. And she yeah. looks at her daughter and says, don't experiment on Thanksgiving. Mm. And she's right. Like, don't do anything crazy that you've never done before. I mean, you can, you can experiment here and there. If you have the knowledge and wherewithal how to experiment. It's like saying, oh, are you pointing to yourself okay. right now? You got wherewithal to experiment? Ain't no experiment. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying leave cooking on Thanksgiving to the professionals. But if you are willing to experiment, maybe leave it to someone who's like cooked a lot before. Well, okay. No, no, no. Here, let me, let me, let me Leaving? rephrase that a little bit. Let me rephrase that a little bit. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Your Sw- cadence, before we say anything else, hold on. Your cadence during this podcast is one of the most entertaining things I've ever listened to in my what do you life. Mean? You sound very different to- today. Well, it's because we're actually talking about cooking and I don't have to think a lot. So You're- I can just let it flow out. I can just let it flow Maggie, like, like are you noticing how molasses Josh is talking? Flying it's, out of my mouth right now. It's almost like he is going up in infliction and then down in infliction, almost like... He is a robot of sorts, and I've never heard you talk like this with a microphone in front of you. All I'm saying is I'm very passionate about. No, I. <laughs> it's incredible the way you're Slow talking. Slow roll today. your experiments. Slow roll them out. Do okay. it like a um. What do they call it in like tech? A beta. Do a beta. Beta <laughs> test. Right. You think That's I know anything about tech? <laughs> I don't know anything either. <laughs> but no, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If you got a new tradition, Mm -hmm. if you got a new experiment you want to put out into the universe, you want to put on your Thanksgiving table one at a time. Do it gradually, right? You don't need to shock the entire table. So say for me, right, I might simply (laughs) add a new spice to that turkey. I might rub it down with a little bit of chile, right? It's still a whole roasted bird. I'm not going to cook it in a whole vat of pork fat. It'd be cool I'm also going to... Oh, that'd be really cool, cool right? <laughs> oh, I got a fryer. It was just like slow confit a turkey. Oh, would that work, though? Because then you're overcooking the breast. Confit I think you're meat. willing. I think you're willing to sacrifice a crappy breast for the rest of the, oh, the payoff. You, you know what I mean? the breast and then you put that in mole? Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm not following my own rule, <laughs> which is right. Like, you, you don't have to do it all at once. Robot Josh. You know, you can slowly <laughs> add these things into your repertoire mm-hmm. because that's what cooking is, right? Sure. You slowly add things into your repertoire. You remember. You learn, you remember. Yeah, yeah. You learn one dish and then that stays in the back of your mind for forever. And then, and then you learn another. Mm-hmm. What's it called whenever you like know something really well? and Oh, you like adapt. Endemic knowledge. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know. I said that. That's mm-hmm. just the word I said. Stephen King. What about him? He writes books. Yeah. <laughs> he has movies. I just wanted to shout him out real quick. No, Stephen King. He said something <laughs> once f- that uh, kind of hit me a little bit hard. He was like, okay. He was like, how do you have time to write all these books? How have you written all these books? And he's like, mm-hmm. if you write one page a day which does not take long. If you want it to be good, that's a different story, I suppose. But if you write one page a day, a year later, you just have a whole book. 365 pages. If you learn a new 
<laughs> you learn a new dish this year for Thanksgiving. You make that part of your tradition. Next year, even the year after, you do another one. Five to ten years, suddenly, wow, you have a whole new Thanksgiving tradition. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of beautiful. And that's the malleable uh, way of cooking. Okay, this feeds into another one of our Thanksgiving tips, which is lie to people. Lie to people. That is... This is my favorite yeah. one. <laughs> Tell them about lying to people. Yeah, so what we have here in our notes is use box mashed potatoes, add mm-hmm. one fancy ingredient, store-bought dinner rolls with an herb butter brushed over, over top. Mm-hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory, man. Like, people don't need to know all your secrets. Like... People don't need to know everything that you're doing. If they say, oh my gosh, these are the best mashed potatoes I've ever Mm. had. What did you do? And they're boxed. It's no one's business that they're boxed. I'm going to throw out a little corollary here. If you go to a restaurant Uh and you see something that says, house made chipotle aioli, what do you think they're doing in the back to achieve that? I think they're taking mayonnaise and taking chipotle peppers and blending them together. I agree with that entirely. Yeah. If it tastes really good, are you going to be mad? I would never be mad. I never be mad. They're they're technically not. I don't not, care that much when I go to a restaurant. Me, me neither. I just want to uh, dip my tater tots in something. I good, literally you know? don't care if restaurants do that. If anything, I respect them for not doing like BS labor. I went to a French bistro recently, uh-huh. not to be named, but it's the one you're thinking of. Yeah. But the one by my house. I know which the one. one that I normally like, and you say you don't really like it. And I'm like, sure, they have some seasoning issues and some consistency issues. Um, but you know, sometimes <laughs> the food's good. And then yeah. you're like, yeah, but are you really you, like their burger costs like forty dollars? Like you want continue with your story? So I got the burger, which was lovely, but uh French fries are supposed to come with a house made aioli, and this is a French bistro, right? Their aioli should be thick and luscious, and it was pu- it was broken. Oh really? Broken, runny, raw yolk, separated. Oil, oh, no. raw garlic, ugh, salt oh, no. didn't even salt, salt didn't even emulsify into it because it just rested at the bottom. And I said nothing. And, and I, expo. it could have been. I, yeah. I have a feeling somebody trying to make it just broke. Point is, that is a house made aioli. Yeah, putting chipotles into a mayonnaise, I wouldn't say that's house made aioli. You're stretching the truth a little bit. Technically, you mix those two things in house. That's great. But I would have much rather had chipotle peppers right? mixed with best foods mayonnaise sure. than. Somebody trying, I assume, their best to emulsify an alien themselves. So this is to say, mashed potatoes, I think where they're won and lost it are the flavorings you add to them. You sure. want roasted garlic? Go for it. And if you can save an hour of your life mm-hmm. by just mixing the box stuff with milk, which again, the box stuff is just cooked potato that has been dehydrated. dehydrated. Yeah. If that was in a fancy restaurant, that would be molecular gastronomy. Totally. Right? We de- we took You're all the so water, right. Nicole. We took all the water out of the potato, and we replaced that with pure butter and milk, so we could inject even more dairy flavor. Like that's molecular gastronomy. It's Congrats, so- you are Grant Ackett's of Alinea <laughs> for using box mashed potatoes. But you know, throw some smoked gouda in there. Throw some yeah. chives in there. Throw I agree. some roasted garlic, and then if people say are these homemade, you go. Yes. Also, who are you, and how did you get into my house? Yeah, I like keeping secrets from people, too. <laughs> <laughs> what are other good things you can lie about? Um, other than food? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Let's go down that no, rabbit hole. No, I don't want to. It's Thanksgiving. Come on. Be, be a little bit, you know, in terms of, like, food stuff? No, like, to your romantic partner. <laughs> no. Can I tell you what? I do not know sure. what shoes go with which outfit for Julia, but then every time she goes... What shoes do you like These more? shoes are these shoes. I've always pointed left. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, so she'll hold them. Uh-huh. And I always point to the left. Interesting. It's just easier now oh. as a reflex. And she always looks great. You know what I mean? You're I, the worst. I, I don't know. Me and Annalise are looking at you like, huh? Oh, that, that was a shock. Oh, wow. That's the big salacious relationship be thing. I am shoes? honest. There, no, it's not that I can't be honest. I don't know which would look better. Hmm. I am a dummy. But I, but she needs confidence. What's one thing and I so lie I just go, in my oh my god, those are so much better. They look beautiful. You're beautiful. I love you. What's one thing I lie about in my relationship? Hmm. I tell David I'm ironing clothes, and I'm honestly on Instagram reels. That's my big lie. <laughs> I'm scrolling, babe. I'm always scrolling. Yeah. I'm not ironing stuff. I'm scrolling. Yeah. I do that with pooping. Yeah. I just sit there for a while. <laughs> You know, I have like, I, I'm going in there in good faith to poop, but mm-hmm. sometimes I can't, but I need to do it because I'm on a schedule, mm. you know, <laughs> there's something wrong with my brain. I don't know if any people just, are out there that know, but, but I just sit, I sit pantsless and yeah. I just, shirtless, I scroll <laughs> shirtless, pantsless. Yeah. I take off all my clothes Guys, to poop. I know this is weird, but Josh Pooping told is me part of Thanksgiving. yesterday in the parking lot that he takes off his shirt to poop like George Costanza. 
We all knew this about me, right? <laughs> Does anybody not know this? And I literally was shocked. My favorite thing is when I wear shorts to the office because I take off all my clothes. But when I wear shorts, I don't have to take <laughs> my shoes off. All your clothes in the work bathroom. Yeah, I, I, that's why I wait for the big stall. Do you take off your socks? I don't wear socks, but... <laughs> what no, but, about your hat? Uh, no, well, I, I'll take off my hat to take off my shirt, then the hat comes back on. But the best thing, <laughs> if I'm wearing pants, I take off my shoes because the pants won't fit over it. But if I'm wearing shorts, and this is yeah, yeah. real, <laughs> I just get shoes on. But then the shoes give you more traction to grip the floor. I learned so much about you every day. Yeah. Add some fresh herbs to box stuffing. Oh, yeah. That's nice. You should definitely do that. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. Um, sides reign supreme. Focus your energies on making the best part of your dish. That was you because I just said turkey is the best part and you should focus your energies on that. Nicole, explain yourself. Let's this see. is turning into a vitriolic debate. It's not Vic vitriolic. Victor Victor what's, vitriol what's, what's vitriolic about this? My mouth is dry. I forgot to put stuff in my cup and Here, I went to drink it. you can have some of my Wait, ice is this water. just spit? What's in this? You can have some of my ice I'm water. I'm going to drink the spit. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so I was thinking about how you construct like a plate of, tur of like turkey dinner. Mm -hmm. And whenever you think about it, like a turkey, like the turkey isn't like the biggest part of your dish. When you look at a plate holistically... What, you're not going to eat a whole turkey leg? If you're the guy who takes the turkey leg at Thanksgiving, I hate you. If you're that person. Is that you? God, I hate who you. Who do you think it is, Nicole? <laughs> like, like, and just, you just go to town. You don't even, like, bother, like, share, like, the oyster part with anybody. Like, ugh, I hate you. Um, but, yeah, it's like an eighth of your plate. And then everything else, that means there's seven eighths left of your plate to make really special. Mm. So when you think about it, the gravy is really, really special. You should probably season it really, really well. The stuffing is going to be really, really delicious. You should, you should take care of that. I have salad at my Thanksgivings. I don't know if you do salad. <laughs> you don't do salad at your Thanksgivings? We always uh, have salad. Somebody's always like, somebody should make a salad. And I'm like, Or like don't. greens or like, or like, uh, like I have several peas. cooked vegetables. Yeah, cooked vegetables, roasted vegetables. Like those things are just as important as the turkey. The turkey is the centerpiece, don't get me wrong. But whenever you look at an actual plate of turkey dinner, it's not the biggest part of the mm. dinner. It's everything else that makes up the total of the dish. Mm. So concentrate on those things. Put a little bit of effort into them. I love that you're going by the geographic size of the foods on the plate yes. as to like their importance, right? Yes. So like when people are like, um, look how big South Dakota is. It deserves just as much representation oh, as yeah. Ohio. No. It's like, well, no, Ohio has like More 30 people. times the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I feel about this. Like the, and Is that not how I feel? The sweet potatoes are South Dakota. They're big and they're just there. No, I do love sweet potatoes. I'm trying to think of the worst side, but all the sides are great. All the sides are good. Because if all the sides weren't great, they wouldn't be on my plate. That's I only serve saying. things that I love. The salad, but we, we can kill that. Um, no, that's a good point. Cause well, I was going to say one of my things is, um, Turkey, you should focus on it, you know, I, but, but see, now I'm going to renege. I'm going to renege. I'm going to recant I officially. I disagree with that. Okay. I'm going to recant and I will say the Turkey, it's important. You should focus on it, but you should only focus on two things on the Turkey. And that is salt and wet. Oh, this is, this is one of your, this is one of your, uh, tips. Self-basting turkeys. This is cool. Self-basting turkeys. A lot of people don't know this. What a self-basting turkey this. is, is just a wet brined turkey. So the reason it's self-based is because there's fat, salt, and water injected into the bird meat. Really? And then when you uh, bake it, the fat in, in salt water, which is to say like mm -hmm. broth because it's been inside a turkey, yeah. comes up from the meat and cascades over the bird. So it's like pre-injected with these things and you buy it pre-injected and pre-brined. Yes. Oh, and so brilliant. it's not the basting, but basting, we, we did this in when we tested Thanksgiving turkey myths. Mm -hmm. Basting does help. Of course. Um, but the best thing you can do for any poultry is to salt it a day ahead. I would say dr brine, dry brine. A lot of people seem to be intimidated by that. Cover yeah. that beezy in salt, man. That's the only thing that matters is the salt penetrates and makes it juicier. It makes it flavorful. Make sure your, tur your turkey is salty and wet because so many turkeys are dry and unseasoned. The yeah. herbs that you're adding to the outside of that skin, don't do squat. The lemons you are shoving up its hole to perfume it, don't do squat. You want salt and you want wet and self-basting turkeys will get you there. Also, side note, Popeye sells turkeys. Did you know this? No, get the hell out of here. What? Popeye sells Cajun turkeys I can buy for $99. Why the hell am I not doing that every year? I don't know, but again... Get a self-basting. I'm not saying the 
the Popeyes ones are self basting, but they are pre seasoned, probably wet brine too. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. What else do we got here? What else do we got here? No, nope. okay. This oh. is this is a good one. Okay, I said, I said practice. You practice, know, that's yeah. how you get good at cooking. Yeah. In that video, uh, when the woman says, don't experiment on Thanksgiving, I believe the issue was she used a mac and cheese recipe that oh. had like cream cheese, a real BuzzFeed tasty ass macaroni recipe. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to do that, do it on your own time and practice. And if it's really good and if you'll stand by that dish, yeah. serve it on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, but if not, you know, that's great. You just get to eat it for a weeknight dinner and your shame is your own practice. Practice is an important part of Thanksgiving. And I, I made a really incredible, um, it was a Chinese American themed Thanksgiving dinner. Really? Uh, nice. My brother and I tag teamed it and we did like five spice I roast this. duck. And, I um, this. but the thing that I made was, you know, the almond cookies you get at Chinese restaurants yes. I made a crumb crust out of that. And then I did a red bean bottom and then I did a, uh, custard, like a, uh, what's it called? Oolong tea custard top. Okay, nice. And I just wish I would have practiced. I wish I would have practiced and known Did that come out the good? cookies are simply too sandy because uh, the fillings were great. The cookies were just kind of too sandy to be mm-hmm. a good crumb crust. And I would have mm-hmm. just rather used vanilla wafers or something. Mm-hmm. And so practice would have taken me a long way on that. That happened to me too, actually, with pie. I was making, uh, it was the first time I was at David's big family Thanksgiving and I was really intimidated. They're like, oh, you're the baker. What are you going to make? And I oh, asked my mother-in-law, I'm like, what's your favorite pie? And she said, coconut cream pie. And I said, great. So I made it and it was just not that good. Oh, I wish I practiced that more well, too. This feeds into number eight. Oh yeah. Outsource dessert. Outsource it. If you're hosting Thanksgiving. Hire someone on Fiverr. <laughs> as someone who bakes and has a children's cookbook, like, you know, just maybe, I don't know. Sometimes outsource dessert if you're doing other things. Take a load off of your own back. Can I talk bad about an ex on this podcast? Bad about an ex? Yeah, Just yeah. don't use their name. No, but like she uh, said she loved baking pies and mm. everyone said she was very good at baking pies and mm. that seemed to be part of her identity. Mm-hmm. But every year something would go terribly wrong with Aww. the pie and then she would be incredibly, this isn't talking bad about her, mm-hmm. but then she would just be like incredibly stressed you know, and then the pie would never be good. And then people would have to sort of like lie to her and say the pie was good. And it's just, there's too much that can go wrong with baking. It's going to yeah. make your life worse, you know. Especially because the ovens are at so many different temperatures. <sighs> it's like, you're, it's a recipe for disaster if you're making like a custard filled something. <sighs> just just leave it to the professionals. Call 48, 24 hours ahead of your bake. Like call them 24 hours mm. before, 48 hours before. And just, it's something just to check off the bucket list. You know what I mean? And again, you should be too drunk by that point to care. Or you can lie to people and say, yes, I made this blackberry pie that has the Kirkland sticker still attached to it. You can do that, right? There's um, one more. You there's take one it. more. I, I'm trying to think. Uh, the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears. Justin Fields, right? They were like, we don't even know if he's the quarterback of the future. And who do they have as backup, Nicole? Um, uh, Pablo De Laurentiis. <laughs> Tyson Bajan listen and I'm, I'm <laughs> I would have never rookie, said that name went to a D2 school but it's like if you're not sure about your quarterback you might want to have a good backup you know what I mean the 49ers they brought in Sam Darnold former number one pick you know what I mean mm-hmm. so all I'm saying is have good backups that's why the Eagles have Marcus Mariota and uh, people who get that reference will laugh at me cause it's, anyways the point is he has nerve damage in his throwing hand and he can't throw a spiral and the point is if you're worried about not being able to execute any dish, have a backup. Have a backup. You, but if you that, can't cook a turkey, have a backup ham sitting outside. Isn't that like extra work though for them to do? Buy a can of, buy a can of gravy. Oh. If you're worried about your gravy breaking, have a can of okay. Heinz Home Style sitting in your pantry. That's a good idea. You don't have to buy a backup for everything. That's a good, okay, okay. You buy a backup, right? You're not going to spend money on a backup safety. Buy a backup for the important things, Nicole. You're right. Backup quarterback. Have a good slot corner who can play outside. Sorry, I am so keyed into football, man. Birds are rocking. Got to flip the hat forwards for good luck. <laughs> so should we tell them what our 10 tips are? I can just go through them really fast. Yeah, yeah run through the 10 tips. Okay, they are not in the order that we said them. They're in mm. the order that I have written down. Okay, practice, number one. Don't experiment on Thanksgiving, Except number do. two. Except do if you know what you're doing. If this is your first time making a turkey, get the self-basting kind or just get the Popeye's one. Mm. Uh, sides reign supreme. Lie to people. Mm-hmm. Use canned foods. Mm-hmm. Have backups. No Tyson Bajant. Outsource dessert. 
Get people drunk slash have good vibes. Trade for Josh Dobbs. And traditions are malleable. Who would have thought Josh Dobbs out of Tennessee? You know, six years, seven years, something into his career. He's out there. He looks great. You know, Cardinals didn't know it was up. And that's the real message of Thanksgiving. You're always a contender in the NFC West. Happy Thanksgiving. (laughs) We're grateful for you. Go Birds! Cook up your own feast while wearing the mythical kitchen apron. It features an adjustable neck strap and 100% heavyweight cotton denim. And it's got a great big pocket for keeping tasting spoons, Tony Sasheries, or little snack cakes. Available at mythical.com. And Nicole, you know what they say about an apron with a big pocket? What? You know. What is Come it? Come on, you What know. is it? Josh, Come I have on, to know. Nicole. Oh, Josh, please you tell know me. It. I have to know. All right, Nicole. You've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. Well, it's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions are, are like, like green bean casserole. I hate when you do that. But Nicole, before we get to their opinions, I want to read your opinions about us. This is everybody's favorite segment, Review a Review, where we take one of your Apple podcast reviews and we review it ourselves, (laughs) turning the turntables back to the turn right on you. Uh, But please leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts. We love them. We love that. Um, um, This is from AMD Roger L. They've given us two stars out of five. Not great. (laughs) Not enough intellectual content. (laughs) Yeah, They fancy themselves an intellectual aid. Debate me. I love funny stuff and I enjoy discussions about food and I even like a little quote unquote silly now and then, but this podcast is 90% just plain silly. I'm sure they have knowledge about food. Thank you. But it turns into what sounds like two middle schoolers giggling and talking about whatever pops into their heads. To be fair, doesn't sound like you're being quite there, quite fair there, AMD Roger L. I've only listened to 3.5 episodes, but I cannot continue. Okay. I think this podcast heals both of our inner child sometimes. Yeah. And this is our hour to just talk about stuff that excites us mm-hmm. and uh, makes us feel good. And um, if that sounds like m- middle schoolers giggling and talking about whatever pops in their heads, it's because that's what it is. And I enjoy doing that with you. Mm-hmm. And even though there's some, you know, moments where we're like super intellectual or maybe more you than I, but like super intellectual and all about like the facts and stuff. There's moments like that. But the moments I personally cherish as your co-host are the moments where we're just giddy and excited around talking about things. And I think it heals our inner child. And that is worth more than the intellectual stuff because you can get that from any podcast. Our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. It's that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us. And when we let that inner light shine, we allow others to do the same. Marianne Williamson, inexplicable presidential candidate. Um, I think that's one of the things that we really pride ourselves in is sort of allowing that silliness to come out. And I also believe, though, that we do hit a lot of intellectual topics. We We try. I mean, we had a whole discussion about how migration patterns affected fish mislabeling in the industry. That's true. Um, But I love that we're not only that. And this is going to sound very aggressive, but stupid people think I'm stupid. Does that, does that track? Like there's some people like, um, somebody once said it now we shouldn't flame Joe. No, screw it. Somebody once said Joe Rogan is a stupid person's idea of what a very smart man is. Okay. You know what I mean? And I think people who think Joe Rogan is smart would think I'm stupid. I'm not saying Joe Rogan's not smart. I have no idea. Um, but all I'm saying is I, I think stupid people hear me talk and go, you're stupid. And then smart people hear me talk and go like, oh, there's a lot of smartness framed within a guise of silliness, a guise that I very much cherish. Mm-hmm. And I think we are a little bit intentional about that. There were times when we thought the podcast was getting a little bit too stuffy and it was me just soapboxing, you know? And so I'm glad that we can have a fair amount of silliness and maybe you listen to the wrong 3.5 episodes uh, or maybe our podcast isn't for you. And that's absolutely fine. And that's so totally okay. So I give this review four stars. Honestly, I would say four stars. It was actually <laughs> pretty, pretty well reasoned and, and thought out. Yeah. You know, um, I think a little bit of editorializing there and I don't like the, to be fair, but because I, I feel you're not being fair, not applying that fairness to everything within that statement, but not a bad review. Um, AMD Roger L. Thank you. For thank you. Letting us know. <clears throat> Let's get in some Thanksgiving opinions. Do you also think your inner child is being healed? No, I I I have my inner child is locked up in a basement, chained away. (gasps) I I haven't cried in like 18 years. I refuse to allow myself to feel. Get back in there, inner child. You're not needed. I'm going to make you so happy one day that you have no choice but to cry. (laughs) That's my goal for 2024. Make Josh happy cry. Waiting for it. (laughs) Okay. 
Hey, Josh and Nicole. My name is Lauren, and hey, I Lauren. have a food mystery for you guys. Ooh, Ooh. A my favorite Thanksgiving side dish is cheese pie. It's uh-huh. a family uh-huh. tradition that I've never heard of anyone else doing. It's not cheesecake. It's a savory pie served with the meal. Hell yes. And you eat it with the turkey and stuffing and stuff. Mm. It's a homemade traditional double pie crust filled with sliced cheddar cheese and baked for like 40 minutes. That's it? It's the most delicious oh. combination of melty cheese and flaky oh pie crust. God. And it goes so well with a bite of Thanksgiving turkey. Oh my God. I was wondering if Josh's encyclopedic brain might know if this actually has historic roots anywhere. I've been told it's a family tradition that originally came from Wales, but I can't find anything similar online. I've never met anyone outside my family who does this or has even heard of it. Did someone in my family just make this up in the past or does it have historical roots somewhere? Thanks, guys. You're my favorite podcast by a mile. Love you. Bye. Lauren, I love you. (laughs) Uh, Please go back to our uh, Thanksgiving tips. Number five, lie to people. Lie Seems like them. maybe your family is lying. Definitely what happened. <laughs> Definitely what happened. I don't know. I think this might be a lie just to make your, your you know, you guys feel good. Like, like my family's like, oh, like, you know, your mom is like a part Spanish. I did a DNA test. 99% Persian. Not a single speck of Spaniard in me. I've never heard of this, but what it immediately reminded me of is like Brion Crout. Don't know. Oh, oh. Brion Crout. Sorry, I know what you that needed is. to know the original French pronunciation. Um, but no, I mean, uh, so a lot of French traditions then got sort of passed over to England. Yeah. Um, because there was a lot of just royal court sharing. So a lot of like British high society had a lot in common with French aristocracy and the food certainly became part of that. Um Brion crout is just a, a wedge of brie or a wheel of brie that is baked inside of Love a pastry it. crust. And one of my favorite things is within general emigration patterns and diaspora is you take the traditional foods of one place and then you kind of replace them with like more blue collar type things or at least things that are blue collar to us. Mm-hmm. This is just like American Brion crout, which I think is fascinating. It's like eating uh, meatballs with iceberg salad in uh, New Jersey. My problem is if it's just cheese and pie crust, mm-hmm. I feel like there needs to be something in the middle like to to give it some like... Ugh. So when, when she initially said cheese pie, I thought it would be like there'd be an egg and maybe a flower that's sort of binding it, which would just give it effectively like a quiche, right? Yeah, that's that's what I thought. But then she just said sliced cheese and homemade pie crust. And I'm like, huh... Because I have no idea what would happen because cheese at high heats, obviously, it's going to separate into oils and proteins and all that. Yeah. But if you just put enough of it in there. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe the pie crust steams and sort of insulates it in a way. I've never heard of this. Um, But I was recently researching uh, an obscure regional American pie because, hear me out, sweet potato pie is a thing. So I thought, why not white russet potato pie? Found out it is a soul food dish coming from uh, Chesapeake Bay region. No way. Like ba- Balt- Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. That's my attempt at a Baltimore accent. Um, but uh, yeah, I really want to try that out. I really want to try out cheese pie. It sounds fun. No, but I, I wish I had a better answer for you. Sounds like fun. Yeah, Brion Crute. That's my guess. Josh, Nicole. Hi, buddy. It's hey. the day after Thanksgiving. I'm slightly hungover from drinking 120 proof whiskey all That's night. That's the way to do it, Not baby. Not very bad, though. Just a little bit. I got to go to work at my normal time of 8 a.m. Oh it is God. currently 7.50, and I'm sitting in a car in my driveway. Oh, my God. Because I'm in also there. just going to be late because I'm going to have a big fat breakfast burrito to, you know, help with the hangover. Man's got his head on straight. Um, and I'm going to lose a little credibility for this, given that my my burrito of choice is a chili verde burrito, which is made with pork. Yum. Um, the worst food, undeniably, oh. at Thanksgiving yeah. is ham in uh, any form mm. except bacon, if 100%. you use bacon. Mm. Bacon is bacon. Yeah. Bacon is God. But bacon is the worst, or not bacon, ham is the worst meat on the table, bar none. Turkey's the best. I said what I said. I just, I don't really like pork chops. It's just not good. Mm. Turkey is better in every form, in every situation. Ground turkey, turkey lunch meat. Mm. It's all better. Anyway, all right. Love the show, guys. 
What do you what Nicole, saying? you grew up not eating pork, so I'm curious no. about your uh we never had ham at our Thanksgiving table. I did have ham at an Easter one time at my ex boyfriend's house. Um, wasn't that great, but I said, mm, so good. I hated it. Um, so I don't love ham in general. So. I grew up hating turkey and loving ham simply because I never had a turkey that was cooked properly. Mm-hmm. But now, and I will gladly eat a ham on Easter, on Christmas, because to me, those are ham holidays. Okay. Whereas to me, Thanksgiving is a turkey holiday exclusively. So to me, ham, it's the only ham don't fit holiday. quite right with the rest of the things. I Gravy agree. on ham is really weird to me. I think ham needs a sweet sauce. I made something called a Jezebel sauce once that was like mar- marmalade sauce. and horseradish and mustard and vinegar. Sounds and so up good. My alley. Put that on ham. I love <laughs> honey baked ham. You do good work. You do God's work. You are missionaries proselytizing the message of ham. And I love that. But food is contextual, right? To me, Thanksgiving is a turkey holiday. That is, that's thyme, that's sage, that's gravy. That ain't pineapple and maraschino cherries. Save that for Easter. Yeah, sure. You know, um, but as far as just disliking pork in general, pork, to uh, me, pig meat is maybe the best meat. Oh, uh, lamb is number one, but pig meat's pretty close um, for two. I think beef is the best meat. Ah, I think it's beef, chicken, turkey, pork, lamb. Beef, you get turkey above pork. Even you don't like lamb like at all. I don't love lamb. It's probably the yeah. least amount of that's like the least meat I eat. Oh God, I eat so much lamb. Um, but no, I think a lot of people have been overcooking pork for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, okay. but because FDA guidelines uh, or USDA, USDA guidelines uh, initially had pork uh, being uh, 160 degrees, which is fully well done because of the big trichinosis outbreak in the 1970s. And then recently, I believe 10 years ago ish, they lowered it back down to 145, which is the proper cook temp for a pork chop. But also I respect your opinion. Look at you with your food knowledge. I'm very smart. We are a very intellectual podcast. Josh, I think you're Debate really me, smart. Um, we do that every day. I debate you every day, all the time. Why is she refusing to debate me? Sorry. Are you, all I do is debate. Are you debating me about debating you? <sighs> oh, gosh. Hi, guys. It's Christina calling in from Detroit, Michigan. We know you uh, love you. I love you. that voicemail. It sounds so nice. Thank also, you. I'm pretty sure this is Thank the closest I'll ever come to talking to you guys in real life, which is very exciting. Um, okay, so I'm one of those weirdos who... You know, weird. Uh, doesn't like their food to touch. I know, uh, I know, it's noxious. Yeah. Um, but I will say that there are a few things that I do appreciate when they touch. Some foods are meant to go together. Thanksgiving mm-hmm. dinner, meant to go together. Mm-hmm. Uh, meatloaf and mashed potatoes, mm-hmm. meant to go together. Mm-hmm. Kentucky Fried Chicken mm-hmm. food bowl, meant to go together. Mm-hmm. One weird combination that I love together mm-hmm. is Caesar salad and mashed potatoes. What? You need to get the perfect Stop bite. Me you, I wouldn't mix them together, but I would take a bite of Caesar salad and a bite of mashed potatoes, and it's mm-hmm. delicious. And I would love mm-hmm. if you tried it sometime. And that's mm-hmm. it. Hope you guys are well. Talk to you soon. Or not. I don't know. Bye. <laughs> I like when all my food touches like an orgy. Yeah, who knows where the pleasure is coming from? The salmon's touching the cucumbers. It's touching the rice. It's just pleasure, baby. Um, no, I agree with you. You know, both about group sex and about food. What are you sorry? What Nicole's caught up in giggly fits? I need to know more about Christina's dislikes when it comes to food touching yeah. because. I hate, this is a thing I've recently thought about. Oh, really? (laughs) What What could it be? I hate when people serve braises on top of purees. Why? So for instance, for instance, like a a braised short rib with like nice demi or gravy, whatever, served on mashed potatoes. I love that. The gravy, if you fork down at the short rib, it's just going to mash the potatoes with the the gravy. It's already mashed. I don't want it mashed together. I want those served entirely separately like an Indian curry with, you know, the various sides. I want the short ribs completely separate from potatoes or whatever puree. If it's rice, different story. Rice absorbs and doesn't just turn into a mush. What you're saying is nuts because a demi gloss is just a gravy. So mashed potatoes and gravy don't But, go uh, but d- don't put the, the meat on there. Then what? give me a separate what? bowl of mashed because when you <laughs> have to fork so the meat, you in, no, I'm serious. You in, you mash 
the gravy and, and the potatoes. Josh, the it's worst already thing. mashed. What are you saying? No, say? I'm saying I hate when you like blend gravy into potatoes accidentally. The gravy needs to sit atop the potato okay, and act as, as a flavor contrast. The, oh, so wait, hard, wait, Nicole. Wait, wait. I'm going You're nuts. so hard. <laughs> I'm going so freaking hard. I'm going, ooh, I'm, You're go, nuts. Ooh, I'm going so hard You're into that very short What are you talking rib. about? There's an, okay, well, maybe use a spoon. You're so aggressive. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Just sorry. use a spoon. What is the f- the fork? The magical fork. Don't use the fork. Use a spoon. Just give me two bowls. Just give me two bowls. <gasps> well, um, yeah. You wanted too many dishes. This isn't about that. You're this isn't about so this. This is about Caesar salad and mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, Ew, I would never do that. No, what she's You're chasing, horrible. and she's correct. She's crazy, but she's correct. No, I'm down to put Caesar dressing on mashed potatoes, but correct. the lettuce, the wilty That's lettuce, she's with trying the hot to get potatoes. To. She wants Caesar dressing. She wants that garlic. She wants that acid. She wants the pepper. She wants the Parmesan cheese. Just put it on the, on potatoes. the potatoes. But also, so I cooked a, a thing the other day. I called it. I called it <laughs> bubble and leek instead like of bubble, bubble and, and squeak, squeak. But I use leek. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I was talking about a fun weeknight dinner I made for the person I love. So what I did is I took leeks, I sliced them. Pretty friggin' thin, right? And then I hit him with a little bit of butter, saute like a, a deglazed it in milk, a little milk deglazing. You and then I boiled in, yeah, whatever. And then I boiled down the leaky milk. And then I cooked potatoes and I just like siphoned those off. Not siphoned, what's it called? Sifted. I sifted my potatoes like I was panning for gold in 1849. California. Tammy with a Tammy. But yeah. And then I put that into the leaky milky butter mixture and mix that all around. So it's almost equal parts potato and leek. And so you get like vegetable chunks framed by the potato. And that was really nice. And that, that, that is what she's after with the Caesar salad. Vegetable chunks framed by potato, salad dressing. That's a good food. And I, when people are like, oh, I don't like hot salad, grow up. I don't love hot salad. I microwaved my salad today. <laughs> it was w- too cold. Well, it's because this room is so cold. This room is so cold and the salads were in the room. I'm freezing in this room. Take the chill off of your salad. Not everything needs to be ice cold. Okay, take the chill off of your salad. The best salad in the world, which is the Olive Garden salad, is ice cold. I don't like that. The the Olive Garden salad would be better if they let it sit on top of the breadsticks for three to four minutes before serving. No, it wouldn't. Absolutely. Nicole, the the aromas Josh, you are the man who literally talks about contrast all the time. You're like, I love it whenever the cold salsas over the hot tacos with the Camarones. That's you, man. You talk about that all the time. And you have the audacity to say that the salad needs to be the same or similar temperature to the breadsticks. The breadsticks are hot. The salad is cold. You eat them together and then you have a good time. And I can't believe you did. You said those things about the short rib. It really pissed me off, Josh. It really pissed me off. You pissed me off, Josh. Nicole, you're at the Olive Garden. You got a bowl of minestrone. I haven't been to Olive Garden in 20 year, 23 years. The breadsticks are going to get to room temp. It's such a light bread with so much dough conditioner. That's going to get to room temp in about three, four minutes, right? Josh, you're That's angering fine. me. The, no, I'm the take contrast my mic and walk should away. be from your... I'm about to, my contrast, mic is over my shoulder. You should be on your fourth Diet Coke by that time. I and don't that drink cold, Diet Coke. It's even, what are you drinking at the Olive Garden? Iced tea, unsweetened. Oh, God, that's fun. <laughs> All right, well, on that note... <laughs> This wouldn't have been a podcast without a Thanksgiving fight, just like middle schoolers do. Well, thank you so much for listening to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. you got new episodes, audio only, coming out on Wednesdays, and that old video drops on YouTube on, what's the other day? Sunday. I think so, yeah. Sabbath. Black for, Sabbath. Yes. If you want to be featured on Opinions Like Casseroles, hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. The number again is 833-DOGPOD1. And Josh... I'm thankful for you. Did you know that Black Sabbath, before the band existed, was the name of a song by a band called Coven? Say it back. Which is really interesting. And even though a lot of people credit Black Sabbath for inventing the heavy metal genre. Okay, don't say you're thankful for me. Just say what you're thankful for. You really have to go back to Helter Skelter by the Beatles, which of course inspired Marilyn Manson to commit gruesome murders. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, We got new videos out on Mythical Kitchen channel every week. Nicole, I am very thankful for you too and I'm very thankful for all of them. We're thankful for you guys. Big thankful time. Thanks for watching and listening.